Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for the ultimate creepy crawly showdown. The moment we've all been waiting for, the main event in the arachnid division. In the blue corner, straight from the Sahara Desert, meet Mr. Scorpion. In the red corner, we've got a guest from South America, meet notorious Mr. Tarantula. In the wild, tarantulas and scorpions rarely cross paths, so let's take a look and see what happens if they both step into the ring. Grab your popcorn and soda because it's time for round one! Both scorpions and tarantulas have tough exoskeletons, but this is just a fancy word for a hard shell. Both shells are made of the same substance called chitin. It's a bit like the thing that makes up our nails. The scorpion's hard shell does give it a slight advantage, though. The tarantula strikes first using a dramatic defensive move called urticating hairs. It flings its barbed hairs at its opponent, which can irritate their skin, eyes, and even stop them from breathing. The scorpion better watch out. But wait! Tarantulas use this move on mammals they meet in their biomes, like mice. This impressive attack isn't affecting the scorpion because of its tough shell. That's one point to our stinging friend who takes an early lead. Round 2. Venom. Hey, I once had a girlfriend like that. The scorpion has powerful venom, and they inject their prey with it through their stinger, while tarantulas use their creepy fangs. Both of their venoms contain a whole cocktail of things designed to target the nervous system. Yow! As venoms are fast-acting, whoever is quick enough to get the first strike in the battle may get the upper hand. Because of an impressive thing called natural selection, scorpion venom is more effective against such animals like mice, lizards, and rats, but not tarantulas, since they're not a common threat to the scorpion. And yeah, both these guys have pretty similar venoms. You can try and sting Mr. Tarantula all you want, buddy, but looks like you're just going to be wasting your energy. Ow! Mr. Scorpion jumps up to Mr. Tarantula and stings it. Is that another point to this stinging guy? Hold on a second, take a look at the tarantula's leg. Looks like the scorpion's venom is already on there, but our spider friend is doing just fine. It may have evolved and grown an immunity to this venom. So it means that if stung, the spider is pretty much guaranteed to survive. However, there's a downside. It might make our eight-legged friend a little sleepy, but it wouldn't do any severe damage. Mr. Tarantula wins this round thanks to its immunity. Best get a blanket for our South American guest, just in case it gets snoozy. The score is tied 1 to 1. Round 3. Size Now, Size is another massively important factor. The bigger the animal is, the more venom is needed to take it down. The Goliath bird-eater tarantula in South America has an impressive body length of 8 inches and can weigh more than 17 ounces. Its leg can also span nearly 12 inches. For context, that's around the same size as an A4 page. Tarantulas are generally much bigger than scorpions. The biggest living scorpion, the giant forest scorpion, spans around 9 inches, including its legs and tail. In terms of a size advantage, the tarantula scores yet another point, 2 to 1 in favor of our 8-legged friend. Round 4. Special Effects One thing the scorpion has that the tarantula lacks is its sharp pincers. They're designed to catch prey so that they can be used against the tarantula. However, scorpions are rarely way larger than tarantulas, so those pincers can't bring much harm. Mr. Scorpion is making its next move. It's managed to grab one of the tarantula's hairy legs. While it seems like the scorpion might have the tarantula trapped and ready to attack, don't underestimate our spider friend. Tarantulas can amazingly afford to lose a leg or two and can detach their legs at the drop of a hat. They can drop their legs if they become trapped or grabbed by a predator. They can grow new ones later. The scorpion needs to act fast. Somebody quick, drop a hat! Mr. Scorpion lets go of the spider's leg and grabs another one before the tarantula can make its next move. Ah, too late. Our spider has managed to escape. The fangs on a tarantula are also far more potent than the scorpion's gnashers. The scorpion would need to spend a lot of time tearing at a tarantula to damage it enough to take it down. In that time, Mr. Tarantula has started to overpower Mr. Scorpion, and its fangs can do way more damage than the scorpion's stinger. It's all starting to go downhill for Mr. Scorpion. Sorry, buddy. Its legs can be used for little other than walking, meaning that it's only got its tiny pincers and stinger for protection. And Mr. Tarantula has another ace up its sleeve. Well, it would if it had sleeves. What spiders may lack in pincers, they more than make up for with their metal-tipped fangs. Their fangs can easily punch through the scorpion's hard shell. 
Mr. Tarantula takes an early lead with yet another point, making it 3 to 1. Round 5. Speed! The Death Stalker Scorpion can whip its tail at around 50 inches per second in a defensive strike. That covers a distance the size of 4 human feet every second. This is super impressive, but the Texas Brown Tarantula can also move at similar speeds. So, while the Scorpion can strike fast, the Tarantula can avoid its attack just as easily. It looks like both get a point where speed is concerned. The score is now 4-2. to two. two rounds are still ahead, and there's a chance for Mr. Scorpion to end up in a draw. Round 6. Hunting Skills Mr. Tarantula is unnatural when it comes to hunting, tracking down small lizards, mice, and rats. They also eat other spiders. What won't these furry guys do? Um, juggling? Come on, eight arms! Unlike tarantulas, scorpions are no hunters. Instead, they wait for their food to come to them. They also only eat small insects and bugs and cannot take down larger mammals, which is not the case with tarantulas. But scorpions do have a slight advantage here. Because they survive by waiting for other animals, they have the superpower to detect vibrations in the ground. So if a tarantula was approaching, the scorpion could detect it before the spider has time to make its attack. Both talents are outstanding, so it's another draw in this round as things are really starting to heat up. The score now stands at 5-3. to three. Round 7. Hidden Talent The tarantula has one more big advantage. It squirts a damaging substance onto its food to feast on it without cutlery. These juices then turn their meals into a sort of a smoothie, which they then slurp up without even having to chew. Oy. Oh wait, I meant wow! With such a talent, it could win a cooking contest. But scorpions have hidden talents too. While Mr. Scorpion may be losing the fight on land, if it can get the tarantula into water, the eight-legged creepy crawly doesn't stand a chance. Scorpions have impressive lungs called book lungs. And no, this doesn't mean they're great readers. It means that when they're submerged underwater, they can survive for up to 48 hours. The spider could last nowhere near that amount of time underwater without scuba gear. The scores at the end of the hidden talent round at 5-4. The referee stops the contest. On that note, it's all over for Mr. Scorpion. Our spider friend takes the champion belt. The tarantula's friends and family are celebrating the victory. The spiders all over the world are celebrating today's win, too. They've seen the fight on TV. Don't ask. In areas with big tarantula populations, there's not a single scorpion to be found. It looks like the tarantulas are hunting down the scorpions and making them run away. And this isn't even the first time tarantula and the scorpion have faced off. The Mexican red rump tarantula versus the bark scorpion is another showdown for the history books. The tarantula wins every single time. It doesn't even matter who has the first hit. Probably next time, it's best to have another tournament underwater.